Hey peeps. How you doing today? You doing good? That's good. How I'm doing? Thanks for asking. I'm doing good, y'all. I'm doing great. No complaints on my end. But for those that's not feeling good, great, having a day moment, whatever the situation may be, we're going to send this prayer up to my Heavenly Father. And we're going to get her done. So here we go, peeps. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We pray for any and everybody that is not feeling good in their minds, their bodies, their spirit, and their soul. We pray that you come through, you heal us, deliver us, and set us free from any and everything that's keeping us bound in our hearts and in our minds. In your son, Jesus' name. And Father, we're going to lift up those that done lost loved ones, and we're going to take a moment of silence. Father, we pray that you speak to their hearts, you comfort their hearts, you encourage their hearts, and you strengthen their hearts in your son, Jesus' name. And Father, we're going to lift up those that's in the hospital or at home bed bound. And we're going to touch and agree with them for full and complete healing and recovery. Because by your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. No weapon formed against us shall or will prosper. And great is he that is in us than he that is in his world. Amen, amen, and amen. Gather on. I forgot my phone. Dang, I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, ass back. And so, sent that prayer on up there to my Heavenly Father. And he's going to do what he do with it. It's a time thing with him, y'all. And so, let's get on into the date. I always got to turn this one. Today's date is... May 3rd, Friday, Fabulous Friday, at 2.13 in the p.m. Fabulous Friday, y'all. And let's check out the weather in the shy. Uh, I need to do my hair so, so, so bad. But my arm... <laughs> Hmm, we'll see. We'll see. Weather. Yep. So it's saying the real feel is 68 degrees, the temperature is 62, the max wind gust is 9 miles per hour, um, the sun rose at 544 this morning, supposed to set at 752, almost 8 o'clock, we're getting here. And today high is 66, Saturday high is 81, Sunday high is 61, Monday high is 67, Tuesday high is 77, Wednesday high is 78. It's looking good. 60s and 70s, y'all, in a few 80s. I ain't in no hurry. I'm not the one looking forward to no heat. No. <clears throat> So there's that. Tree pollen is high. Mm. Texas flooding submerges roads, homes, and cars. Wow, y'all. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Severe storms to continue to rattle. Floods, parts of Central U.S. 
through first weekend of May. What's up with all these tornadoes, y'all? I be on Instagram, TikTok. They be showing these tomatoes, t t tomatoes, tornadoes. I'm like, I'm, sc Ooh, I'm scared of tornadoes. Oh, my God. Uh -uh. Hell. You got people experiencing hell. The sass of grapefruits. What? Of course, uh, more than a dozen tornadoes from Wednesday. Category 1. Wow, y'all. What's really going on? And then in Texas, Huntsville, 10 reports of tornadoes. Torrential rain also fell. I ain't free to go down that rabbit hole, y'all. Anyways, <clears throat> today is Friday. And so, <clears throat> what I'm getting ready to do is do my two reads. And, um, child number eight will be here tomorrow, Saturday. So, I'm going to do these two reads. So, because I'm not going to be probably recording that much. <clears throat> But I've had these two reads for at least Monday and next Friday, this Monday, coming up, and next Friday coming up. I'll see, because I just, I, I, I just do what I do, y'all. But anyways, let's go and get these reads done. I think I've been, like, just recording a lot of stuff because, um, um, yeah. I went out earlier and I got up early. So, my brain, I've been busy. Like, I went in the girls' room yesterday, Thursday. I had to make room in them, in that, in them drawers. Just took a whole bunch of clothes out. The drawers and the closet. That was a lot of work because that really went on my schedule. That went on my, on my mental list, you know. But... I had to, I had thought about it. I'm like, oh, child number eight, I need some room for her clothes. So, yeah, I just been getting her done. But anyways, I record it because that's what I do. Okay, okay. So, let's get on into the read. The first read I'm going to do is comfort <clears throat> for the grieving spouse's heart by Gary Rowe. Hope and healing after losing your partner. And again, just a loss. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get right into it. And let's see where we at. The last one I read was I Feel Like a Shadow. <clears throat> And now, we're going to read about Missing You is Exhausting. Wow. Okay, here we go. North Three Parks. From the grieving heart, I'm exhausted. I wake up each day and sigh. My body feels heavy. Everything takes so much effort. Brushing my teeth is a workout. Not sleeping well doesn't help. Not eating well doesn't help either. My head feels like it's stuffed with cotton. My eyes hurt. I live in a daze. It's like I'm sleepwalking through life. Missing you is exhausting. My heart is deflated. Part of me seems to have left with you. What's wrong with me? I don't feel like myself at all. Who am I now? I want my old life back. I want you back. I'm so tired I can barely think. I managed to gear up for what I must do and somehow function enough to get through it. Then I crash on the other side. I zone out for minutes at a time. I hope this gets better. Wow. Part 2. 
Grief demands incredible energy. Life in flight or fight. Life in fight or flight mode is exhausting. Fatigue is natural and common during times of loss. If someone was hit by a bus, we wouldn't expect them to jump up and carry on as usual. If they survived the collision, they would be transported to a hospital, preferably to one with a trauma center for emergency life-saving tr treatment. Once their life is out of danger, the stabilizing process takes time. Then the healing and recovery process can begin. During this time, all of their physical energy is being channeled toward simply staying alive. Wow. Fatigue and exhaustion are routine fare for those recovering from life-threatening injuries. We've been hit by the grief bus. It can stun and flatten us. We don't simply shake the collision off and walk away unscathed. Our wounds are invisible, but real. The emotional pain can be intense and draining. Pain in any form taxes our system and exhausts us. Amen. Rest becomes a priority. Fatigue takes a toll over time. We simply can't do as much. Our performance at work might be off. We need more space and margin in life than ever. This is doubly difficult because with our spouses gone, we're now most likely responsible for even more than we were. Taking ourselves and our grief seriously is critical. Being patient with ourselves is important. Like other grief challenges, the fatigue will change over time. Our hearts, souls, and bodies will adjust and recover. Time doesn't heal all wounds, but healing does take time. Wow, that was good. Part 3, Affirmation. Grief is exhausting. I try to have realistic expectations of myself during this time. That was good. Missing you is exhausting. That was a good one. I like when he said, I like his analogies and his scenarios, you know, about getting hit by a bus and being in the collision and taking you through the, like the little steps. And that's the steps of getting hit by the grief bus. I liked it that. So, let's get ready to do another one. And this one is called, I'm Not Fine. I'm Not Fine. Part 1, From the Grieving Heart. Wearing a mask is exhausting. No wonder I don't want to be with people much right now. I'm sad. Everyone wants me to be happy. I am irritable. And people close to me wonder why. Other ask how I am. Do they really want to know? No, I don't think they do. So, I say, I'm fine. I'm not fine. And apparently, it's not okay to not be okay. People seem to get upset because I'm grieving. I miss you. Can't they understand that? I'm learning to hide. It's like I'm on the stage playing a role. I thought it might be better to keep the emotions inside when around others. But stuffing them away and trying to hide them can be totally exhausting for me. It's like I'm having to separate from myself and my own heart. I feel like a hypocrite. I don't enjoy being fake. But at the same time, I don't want to be emoting over all. I don't want to be emoting all over everyone and everything either. I'm caught. I'm stuck and frustrated. 
if I must wear a mask, then I must also find safe places where I can take it off. That's deep. I like that. If I must wear a mask, I must find a safe place where I can take it off. Wow and whoa. Part two. We're wired to love and to be loved. And that requires honesty and authenticity. Authenticity. I don't like that word. And that requires honesty and authenticity. Most of us strive to be real, but none of us are completely ourselves with everyone we meet. And that is so true. We naturally more vulnerable and open with those we trust. True. The people we know that love and accept us for simply who we are. In other words, all of us wear masks from time to time. Depending on where you are, where we are, who we're with, and the state of our own hearts. Some masks, of course, are thicker than others. Ooh, I like that. The loss of a mate and the resulting gift. <clears throat> the loss of a mate and the resulting grief pose a special challenge because the world around us typically doesn't respond well to emotional pain and suffering. We run from grief rather than drawing closer to it. We decide what's most appropriate for any given situation and we act accordingly. Grief, however, will not be boxed that conveniently. Though we can't hide it momentarily, it refuses to be silenced. The heart will express itself one way or another. That is so true. Grieving well is not about getting rid of all our masks. It's about finding a few people we can be real and honest with. People with whom we can share our pain, frustrations, and confusion. We need to feel safe. Our hearts need to be heard. I like that. Part 3. Affirmation. I will be myself and express my heart with those I trust and feel safe with. I will honor you by sharing my grief. Wow, man. These are some two deep reads. This was good. Wow. I liked it that. Mm. Missing you is exhausting. I'm not fine. And it's just deep. And today is 5 3 24 Friday. I'm not fine. I will be myself and express my heart with those I trust and feel safe with. I will honor you by sharing my grief. That's deep. Share it. Get it out. Because a lot of people is grieving. It's a lot of grief going on in the world today. And we have to be here for one another. You know? Whether it's just a listen. You know? For the most part, it's just really listening. Yeah. I like he say our hearts need to be heard. We just have to listen. That's it. So I get that done. Do I probably I'm gonna do a prayer with that one because I haven't did a, a prayer out this book in a mini y'all. And again, she be feeling some type of way. The last one I did, I'm thinking, I don't know. Is this the last one I did? Maybe. I don't think so. Wow.
Do I want to read this with this? No, I'm going to leave the grieving. I'm going to leave this book by itself. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just let it be the grieving hearts. And then I'll do the prayer probably with this book. So, <clears throat> we're going to cut it right here. And I hope y'all enjoy both of those reads. And that it spoke to you on some level. And that you related to it. And that um, it lets you know you're not alone. And the person who wrote that book experienced all the, the feelings and emotions. And, um, and when we get through, you're going to come forth stronger. Okay? You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And that's what it's all about. So, again, I hope you enjoy both of these two reads out of this book. And on that note, um, this is going to be my Monday video. So, I hope everybody have a blessed Monday, a safe Monday, a productive Monday. Get her done on whatever level. And if you can't, show yourself some mercy and grace. It's okay. Ain't going nowhere. And have a protective Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Da, 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 until I see y'all again. And on that note, I'm out. Peace, love, share some, and what? I holla. Hey, y'all. Now, let me get, get ready to do read number two.